Hello, welcome to another review of Drones Visual. Today I bring you a brushless quad that caught my attention a while ago because it has a GPS and it seems to offer functions such as auto takeoff and landing and auto return home, GPS hole, circling one point and FPV. The quad I'm talking about is the CG035 and as far as I know, it will come in two versions, a basic one, which is the one I have over here, and an FPV version that just as the name indicates, it will come with a camera, transmitter, and an FPV screen. What I will do today is cover the contents of the box I have right here in front of me, then check the main features of the battery, transmitter, and the quadcopter itself, and then in the next video, we will cover uh, the flying and how well the functions in the quad work. So now, let's take a look at uh, what's inside the box. The first thing we will see are the props, we get two sets of props, these ones over here, and then there are four props mounted on the quadcopter already. As you can see, these are six inches props. I know many of you are interested in getting uh, the exact measurements, so here you can see it by yourself. Then of course, to protect the props, we have these uh, four prop guards. I think they just insert in their arms without the need of screws. I will check that out later although I'm not sure whether I will use them actually. And then the landing gear, very simple and light. Each leg attaches to the body of the quad uh, through two screws, which are included. Then we have the battery that comes protected in this plastic housing, making it easier to uh, insert in the aircraft. If we look at the other side, we can actually see uh, the battery inside. And then uh, on the other end, we have uh, two connectors. One is the balance port and the other one is the connector that will supply the quadcopter. This is the balance uh, port, which you connect to the balance charger to uh, charge your battery. And if we take a look at the actual weight of the battery, according to my scale, it's 116 grams. So you have that information in case you, uh, you're wondering. If we look inside, we'll be able to see that this is a 2S battery with a capacity of 2000 milliamps. It seems the battery has a female DIN connector. And according to the specification, it should take roughly an hour to charge this battery. Now, the battery itself uh, seems to be like around four inches in length. And as you can see over here, I mean, I know that many of you sometimes ask about the dimensions and weight of the battery. So that's why I'm showing you here. And here on the side is around 1.7 centimeters. The next thing we'll find inside the box is a very simple balance charger. And uh, here you can see the power input for the balance charger. Then if we move to the other side, we'll have a couple of uh, balance ports for 2S batteries. This is the power supply cable, and it's nice that it comes with a USB connector on one end, so you can charge the battery via a power bank or through any USB output. Let's now go ahead and cover the buttons and switches on the transmitter, although I do not have the instructions manual over here, uh, so I will come back to that uh, in later videos. But as far as I know, well, uh, these are both here uh, spring-loaded sticks, and uh, you can change in the transmitter whether you know you want to have it in mode 2, mode 1, is up to you. You can do it via transmitter. Then over here, the SWD uh, button, I think they control the photo and video functions in the FPV version. Then the SWB switch, which is a three position switch, should engage the GPS mode in position 2 and I believe the return home function uh, or mode in position 3. Then if we move to the other side, we have the SWA switch and I think it will control headless mode and uh, circling around a fixed point. We'll try that later when we fly the quadcopter. And then the, this one over here, I think they control the follow me mode and perhaps uh, FPV frequency uh, channel, sorry, in the, in the quadcopter. Again, we'll test that properly later. Then we have these buttons over here to trim uh, the sticks in case we find any regular uh, flying pattern in the quadcopter itself and an LED that indicates when the receiver, uh, I'm sorry, transmitter is on. Then this large button over here seems to control the uh, sort of like the gimbal or camera support uh, in the FPV version, not quite sure yet. And this button here in the center controls, controls the auto takeoff and landing functions. If we move to the other side, there is another uh, large button over here. I'm not quite sure what it does yet. I'll try to find out and let you know. 
And then if we move here to the center, we have basically the power button and it seems to be uh, that it seems to be locked and I think to unlock it you have to move both sticks upward and to the right. And then as you can see the transmitter uses four AA batteries which are not included. And then here on the bottom you can see a series of LEDs that show us GPS connectivity and so on and I'll provide more info about that later when I try the quad. Holding the transmitter feels rather comfortable and it seems really really light although I have not inserted the batteries yet. And finally here we have the brushless quadcopter CG035 without the landing gear. I can't help to notice how much it looks like the MJX X101. Uh, uh, so I guess I could say that this is basically the brushless version of the X101. Uh, you can see here the 1806-2300 kV motors from Emax. Uh, they seem decent but I don't like so much the labeling they have uh, glued on the case of the motors. And then it seems that the Quad has a GPS antenna here, although we will take a look inside later to see whether the antenna is actually there or not. And these are ventilation ducts to cool down the ESCs that should be right under. Then under each arm we'll find LED, LED lights and uh, here you can see them as well. If we look at the rear arms we can again find the same LEDs uh, under the motors and on the arms as well. On the belly of the quad there are actually three connectors here on the side potentially for the gimbal or camera support is actually probably just one servo that it connects there and you probably will be able to connect some other components like the camera i'll find that about that later uh, and this button here not sure yet what it does then of course we have four openings uh, to secure the landing gear that goes inserted right there uh, and the next smaller openings are for the screws that secure the camera support which is uh, not included in the basic version then on the rear we have the opening for the 2000 milliamp uh, battery that I showed you before and here you can take a look at the opening a little bit dark inside the compartment though. Then I hope you can uh, visualize the actual dimensions of the quad here uh, just in case you're interested in this information well here you have it. And finally this is how the quadcopter looks like with the landing gear on. To me it looks a lot like a hybrid resulting from mixing the MJX uh, X101 with the Blade 350 QX. Not sure if all of you see this resemblance but that's the way it looks to me. Anyways, this will conclude my brief unboxing today. In the next video we will take a look at how this quadcopter flies and hopefully we will cover whether all the functions such as GPS, hold, follow me most exactly, uh, uh, sorry, and all those other uh, functions work properly. I hope the information I have provided here in this video is useful. If you have some questions or would like to uh, correct anything that I may have incorrectly said, don't hesitate and drop me uh, some comments. And if you're interested in the topic of drones and would like to get the latest news and reviews directly from China, subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you all in my next video. Hasta la vista.